come from a surfing background, surfing and kayaking background for the most part. And it wasn't until the early uh, 80s that I started riding snowboards. In the early 90s, I started riding only hardwood boards. And from about 92, 93, till a couple of years ago, every year I try a soft boot system, and I just never gelled with the, the twin tip and the soft boots, and it was just never my thing. And I, I've always loved riding hard boots. And a few years ago, a friend of mine introduced me to the, this resurgence of surf style snowboarding. Uh, I guess the best way you can describe this is snowboarding started as surfing on snow in the 80s and then it sort of moved towards skateboarding. Nothing wrong with that, I mean, it's perfectly fine and it's the biggest part of snowboarding, but that's where everybody has. But you basically ride a, 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 a twin tip board like you're riding a skateboard. And I felt like when I was on the water, I wanted to be on a surfboard, I wanted to turn like a surfboard, and when I was on the snow, I wanted to be on rails on a hard boot race board. The problem with that is that you're on rails. I mean, you're literally kind of a passenger. I mean, yeah, you're in control, but you're going, you're following the arc of this board and it's taking you off in this direction. And you've got these really hard boots. And I would take this everywhere. I would go to Mammoth and Whistler, BC and Salt Lake City and all over the Alps. And I would ride everywhere hard boots um, on various versions of a race board or a, a free car board. When my friend introduced me to the surf style snowboards three or four years ago, it was a, a moment, it was a, it was a hallelujah moment for me, where I found, refound, rediscovered surfing on snow. And I've tried several dozen boards out there and they all do something great. They all, they're all good boards. I mean, there's a few that I didn't really like, but most of them were, 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 were really good boards and I enjoyed them all. But there wasn't one board where I went, ah, this is the board. And I decided that this was an opportunity for me to get back into the snowboard industry. I've been out of it since uh, the late 90s, early 2000s. And I decided that I was going to design the best surf style snowboard that I could. Take all the things that I liked, all the various boards that I, that I tried, throw my own ideas into it, and I came up with the pitch wing. This is the first board that I've done in the line. In the, in, the, in the Solstick line. We now have a whole range of boards, but this is the first board. It is truly the most incredible board I've ever ridden. I mean, I can carve it like a hard boot board. I can put that thing on rail and I can really rail it through the turn. I can do the same thing in powder. I can jump on powder and I can carve this thing like I'm carving a race board in powder. It's fantastic. But at the same time, I can hit those things on the sides of the slopes. Those when all the snow gets pushed out to the sides and you've got these banks and you've got these bumps and bubbles and little bowls and all kinds of things and you can hit all these things and do all this cool stuff like you're slashing the top of a wave and it's the most amazing fun and you know it's got this big big V in the tail but the tail is really flexible so you've got the edge length if you want but the tail is really flexible so you can get that thing on edge and you've got to be softer than a race board but you've got to really control the board you can get this thing on edge and you can drive it through the turn. And then if all of a sudden you want to tighten up the turn, you just compress the tail and it just bends it up and the radius of the turn tightens right up. And you can whip that thing around like you're doing a slash on a surfboard, like you're breaking the thin screen. But you're still holding an edge. Then you can go hit something on the side of the slope and you can just whip that thing off the side of the slope. It's got a really flexible nose on it, so you can, at the same time, you can lift that tail off on the side of the slope on some kind of a berm or some hitter. And you can compress the nose and you can really get that back of the board off the snow and whip it around. It's still a side cut camber board, but the side cut and camber are shifted back from center. It's definitely a directional board. When it has tail rocky, you can go back. But it's not, it's not what it's intended for. It's, it's a directional board. And um, you stand back on the board, not as far back as on some, further back than on others. But because you can really compress the tail, you don't have to stand as far back. You don't need a board that's this long behind your foot. Because even though it's this long, it's very flexible. So you can really compress it and turn it around. So the pitch wing is the first board in the Soul Stick line. We're really excited about it. We have it in four sizes, uh, 61, the 55, the 50, and then we have the 49 for, for women, which is also a, a different flex pattern. So it's, it's a very similar shape to the 50, but where it flexes is different because 
women's weight and the way that they turn the board and the way they generally tend to ride a board, their, their strength to weight ratio is different. So it's not just a girl graphic on a 150, it's, it's a different board. Um, and uh, it's, it's worth a try. If you want to you have a new experience on snow, this is the point.